Hello all, my name is Paige Smith and this is my digital oral presentation on the film Breakfast at Tiffany's. This film was released on October 5th, 1961 by Paramount Pictures and it is categorized as an American romance comedy directed by Blake Edwards and written by George Axelrod. Audrey Hepburn is still even today considered one of the most iconic images of the 20th century American cinema and she plays the main character named Holly Golightly. She is a paid Manhattan party girl who falls in love with a writer named Paul and he is being supported by a very wealthy woman in return for an intimate relationship. In other words, he is considered a male prostitute. But throughout the whole movie, Holly is a combination of absolutely breathtaking elegance and glossy Manhattan sophistication. She willingly becomes friends with Paul because he reminds her of her beloved brother, Fred, who is off fighting in the war. Her aspirations for glamour and wealth tie her to the top-notch jewelry store Tiffany's, and Tiffany's is where she does feel most comfortable because she feels it's the one place where nothing could ever go wrong. Eventually in the movie, Paul falls for Holly because he starts to realize that their situations in life are more similar than he'd like to admit. And they quickly become attached because of their want for something outside their current lot. Polly eventually also gives off a vibe that she is into Paul. But then the real question becomes whether Paul can fulfill Holly's life aspirations. And if he can't, what needs to change for there to even be possibly of a future for them? On second note, this film also falls under our latest topic of study, The Power of Protest. Breakfast at Tiffany's fits into this category because of Mickey Rooney's character, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing his character's name right, um, Mr. Yunioshi. His Asian character was the inspiration for real world protests because he became an example of institutionalized racism in Hollywood. His character is portrayed as very odd and a little on the pervy side because in the movie there's a scene where he does try to get Holly upstairs in his apartment to do a private photo shoot. Which you know he's one more than just sex and pictures. <laughs> and his appearance alone sets him to be a ridiculous personification of a World War II era anti-Japanese propaganda cartoon. I mean, they went well over the top with his parents. It's, it's just all in all ridiculous. And this would be because they made him slick his hair completely back with jail, um, which obviously wasn't a style back then when the movie was made. And he wore, I mean, well oversized prosthetic teeth. And they made him squint his eyes so much that in the movie, you're like, can, I don't even understand how he could even see what he was doing. And he never had, I mean, he, <coughs> excuse me, and he had over-the-top thick glasses, which just looked really dorky and weird. And because of all this, I can see how viewers took this film as an example for insulting ethnic stereotypes. But I honestly don't think that the director and writer purposely meant his character to be this type of symbolism. I think that they just tried a little bit too hard with this comedy portion of the role in the film and in my opinion he didn't even really seem very humorous his scenes were just kind of annoying because you could tell that he was just trying to do too much it's more like being in the wrong place at the wrong time his role became very very over exaggerated to the public viewers i think but honestly the movie would have been just as great if they would have left him out even though all of this, I do believe Breakfast at Tiffany's is one of the few films not to be greatly harmed by all of its flaws, and honestly, it happens to be one of my personal favorite movies. All of the romantic scenes in this film just stand out very well, and they are the reason this movie is a must-see, in my opinion. And, for example, when Holly sings Moon River to her cat, her voice is so lovely and so soft and soothing. And Paul is secretly listening to her <laughs> it's adorable, uh, in the apartment above hers out the window. And the whole scene is just so sincere. It really brings you in into the film emotionally. 
and also on the day that Paul and Holly decide to go out in the city and do things that they've never done before, it, that really draws the audience in because it shows that their love is finally starting to bloom. But my favorite scene is their kiss in the rain. And for some odd reason, it is one kiss that every girl wishes to have at least once in her lifetime. I don't know why. It's just this huge fantasy kiss that all girls wish they could have with their knight in shining armor. And the scene was just simply brilliant. I do adore this film. And I adore Audrey, Audrey Hepburn as well. She was the perfect person to play Holly, and I couldn't have pictured this film having anyone else play her. She just really did a very, very great job and was very, very good. <laughs> and this movie will also continue to be one of my top favorites of all time. And if you haven't seen it yet, I do think you should watch it. Even if you don't think that you'd like it, I do believe that everyone should at least watch it once. But that's all I have for you today, and so thank you so much for watching my presentation, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.